Hello, everyone. Welcome to the courseware launch of our advanced selling and sales management courseware. Uh, my name is Virgil. I am a product marketing manager here at Stukent, and I'm excited to be here with you today. Um, we're looking forward to hearing from our authors uh, a little bit later. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to do a few announcements. Um, as people are coming into the room, I want to let you know that you don't need to worry about uh, your audio, your video being on. That's all That's all muted and, and uh, you won't be able to to come on the stage at all, so uh, don't worry about that. Um, on the right, you'll see we have the chat feature, so you can you can chat in there questions throughout the event. Um, let's go ahead and get used to that now. Chat in where you're tuning in from, uh, what school you're at, um, and just for fun, let's chat in whether you prefer a window seat or the aisle seat, uh, or possibly the middle seat, if there's anyone that prefers that. got uh, Lauren tuning in from Idaho Falls, who prefers a window seat. Uh, Angie from Bemidji State, uh, also the window seat. Uh, a lot of window seats. Oh, a couple aisle seats here. Excellent. Chicago, Nebraska. Margaret, welcome from Canada, prefers the window seat. Awesome. So uh, any, any questions you have, you can put in the chat throughout the event. Um, and then uh, every once in a while, uh, we'll pop up an action on the uh, bottom left of the screen where you can, um, you know, uh, take action on a link that we have. Um, you can close that button if you don't uh, want to see it. But right now, we'll pop up our student professor community. Um, this is an exclusive Facebook group for educators just like you, uh, where you can network with one another, get answers to questions you have. Um, and we also put resources in there that you can use in the classroom. Uh, so you can go ahead and, and click that if you want to join that community, or you can just close that pop-up um, if you don't want it to, in the way of your screen there. Uh, now, I want to let you know about a couple upcoming events that we have. Uh, we have two more launches coming up in the next few months, one for strategic management and planning, and another for brand management. Um, and if you haven't heard, our marketing ProfCon for 2023 will be in person. Um, and tickets are limited, so be sure to uh, check that out and get yours soon before they're gone. Um, you can find links to all of these events in uh, in our events page, which um, has been popped up there on, on the left. Um, you can go and see those events, uh, get registered for those, and get signed up, and we'll look forward to seeing you at all those events. Um, I also want to familiarize you with our polls function. We'll have several polls throughout the event. So uh, it's on the right here. You'll see a couple of polls pop up. Um, you should see the following two polls popping up on the right side of your screen. Uh, so the first one, does your university offer uh, currently offer a professional sales degree? And then the second one, how many sales-focused courses does your program currently offer? Uh, so you can go ahead and, and put those polls in there and see the results. It looks like we have a good split between uh, yes and no on whether the your university currently offers a sales degree. And, and a pretty good spread on the sales focus courses everywhere from one to, to four or more. Uh, so it'll be great. Donald and BJ will be able to, to speak to that a little bit in their, their presentation today going through the courseware. Uh, and now I want to take a minute to give an exclusive first look at the advanced selling and sales management courseware um, before we have uh, uh, bring on a special guest and then have the authors um, come on and walk us through their courseware. Prepare students for success with the Advanced Selling and Sales Management Courseware from Stukent. This all-new courseware builds on the concepts in the Professional Selling Courseware and helps you elevate your students' selling skills with ease. With this courseware, you can prepare students to use research and analytics to identify the best customers to target, develop creative prospecting methods, effectively overcome common objectives, and succeed in a business development representative role. This courseware was developed by B.J. Allen, a professor of marketing at Brigham Young University, and Donald Kelly, a top performing sales professional and a Salesforce top influencer for 2022. Together, Allen and Kelly bring incredible insights to this courseware and take your students beyond sales theory, giving them tools to boost their careers from day one. To complement the courseware, Allen and Kelly created a full suite of turnkey resources for educators, including detailed lesson plans, lecture slide decks, engaging assignments, and more. 
The advanced selling and sales management courseware integrates with popular LMS platforms, and with Stukin's Instructor Portal, you can access your courseware, review your students' results, and manage your course options all in one place. To see how the advanced selling and sales management courseware can supercharge your sales curriculum, schedule a walkthrough with one of our course consultants today, and be sure to stay current with Stukent. Shout out to Stukent's awesome video and design team for always delivering quality work. Uh, I'm super excited uh, for this, this courseware that we're going to talk about today. And before I introduce our authors, uh, we have the Stukent founder and CEO, Stuart Draper, here with us. I'd like to bring him on stage just to, to share a few words. Thanks, Virgil. Thank you for being with us today, folks. I am so happy to be here with you to and to have you have the chance to meet Donald and, and BJ, if you haven't yet. They are outstanding authors. I would say I'm a pretty average founder and CEO, not above average when it comes to just the day-to-day -day operations and things that I have to do. But what I'm really good at is getting a lot of the right people around me. And Donald and BJ are two of those outstanding folks that have come in to help Stu Kent become what it is today. Stu Kent was started in 2013 with a mission to help educators help students help the world. And we've done just that. Everything from uh, dual enrollment, community college students to uh, executive MBA programs in Harvard across the world. We've been in over 70 countries worldwide now. Uh, we'll help over half a million students this year. It's really been outstanding to watch us learn and grow as a business. And we want to keep learning and growing with you as educators and team up with you and have you a part of our mission. We know that when we help you as educators, you're able to help your students. When you help those students, they can go and do good in the world. It's so fun to get to connect with each and every one of you. And you'll see me on the chat here in a minute as we engage and interact on this webinar today. Thank you for joining us. Advanced Professional Selling is going to be outstanding. The work that they've done with us already for Sales Courseware has been top notch. Uh, hopefully some of you have already used it. If you haven't, please take the time, check it out, get to know the Stu Kent team. Um, and if anything else, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing to make the world a better place through education. All the best, guys. Thanks, Stu. We uh, appreciate you, appreciate your leadership. Uh, now it's my pleasure to give a brief introduction of our authors and bring them on the stage so they can take you through this, uh, this courseware that we've been, we've been hyping up. Uh, Dr. BJ Allen is an assistant professor of marketing at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. And Donald Kelly is founder and CEO of the Sales Evangelist and an adjunct professor at Brigham Young University, Idaho. So I'll go ahead and bring them on stage now and let them uh, let them show off what the, what they've been working on for uh, for the past several months uh, to display to you. Woo! Welcome, Donald. Man, intro. You guys know how to take care of us over there. Man, I love it. I love seeing. Uh, yeah, I love seeing our our courseware front and center behind Virgil there. I know, man. Oh, man. Well. Everyone, we are so, so excited and so pumped to be here. Um, I'm standing today because I just can't contain my excitement. Um, so if I start jumping and doing jumping jacks, you know the reason why. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to just go ahead and just kind of introduce ourselves. Uh, BJ and I go way back. Um, we actually are uh, back in our early uh, teenage, late teenage years. We got a chance to meet at 19 years old and got a chance to interact. And um, BJ has uh, been a a good mentor and good friend since that standpoint. So as we were working on this together, it was so much fun to put together these two courseware. And what I love about what BJ does right now is that he is just as passionate as I am for sales. He teaches professional selling at BYU. And the cool thing is that not only BJ does he teach the, cl teach the classes, he leads and develop 
the sale, BYU sales program to what it is today. They have worked with some of the largest companies in Silicon Valley, and they're part, participating with BYU. And just recently, they won one of their sales competition, I believe at the University of Utah, just over the past weekend. So the, the program there is great. He's an academic publish, uh, publishing, excuse me, academic publications include Journal of Marketing and Journal of Retailing, an editorial review board for Journal of Product in, Innovation and Management. And uh, I believe also over the weekend, while in Florida, BJ won uh, another award as one of their top um, participant with uh, the JPIM. And it's just doing some fantastic things when it comes towards marketing and uh, sales. So it was like a no-brainer to partner with BJ and work on this stuff. Thank you for those flattering words, Donald. So <laughs> I, remember, <laughs> I remember, I don't know, maybe 10 or so years ago, Donald tell me he was going to start a sales podcast. Well, my question was, what is a podcast? And Donald tell me a little about the podcast. I'm like, ah, that sounds cool. So he started it and it just absolutely blew up. He's one of the very first people to, to do a sales podcast. And Donald will be humble, but Donald's a big deal in the sales world. Uh, so he was eventually able to kind of leave uh, his full-time job and do the sales evangelist full-time. He has a really thriving consulting business training. He also uh, produces podcasts for other companies, including like Homes and Garden. Uh, he's an adjunct professor because he just loves to teach and kind of sh share his his sales knowledge. Um, and also really just recently, Donald started to get a lot of uh, the accolades that really, really top kind of business people do. So he was a, a LinkedIn insider, a top influencer, a sales force, top influencer and these aren't just like um you know in florida where he's at this is or the united this is the world this is top influencers in the world in the world of sales so uh, you know i appreciate you for those kind words bj i'll slip you the the 50 dollars i told you i'll give you for for saying some good stuff about me there <laughs> But it's it it's fun though. Like it, it it is really awesome with what we do. Um, and and this is why this courseware was like was so fun to put together because it's real life. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. But BJ, I know we have a poll that we want to share share with them. Yes. Another little yeah. Quiz. So uh, here's just a fun poll. We're gonna we're gonna discuss a little bit. Um, what percent of business majors will work in a selling position at some point in their career? Ooh, can I answer too, or is that going to be cheating? Donald, you can do whatever you want. It's your webinar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So it looks like there's some good response so coming in here. Most people are saying 80, a few, 63. Yeah, 80, 63. All right. So our, our final answer, I think we were about wrapped up here at the poll. Oh, we got another one that came in. A, a, someone said they're going to bid $1, like on Price is Right. They're like, we're going down to 49%. All right. Drum roll, please, Donald. And the winner is 80%. Yes. Yes. 80%. So studies show, right, um, that 80% of all business majors will work in a selling position at some point in their career. Uh, in fact, um, just in my at BYU last week, we had a major sell, a major finance company come and speak to the finance uh, students, and they said, "You need to learn how to sell, right? Because like what everyone's doing <laughs> is business development. We don't want you to be able to just crunch numbers. We need to be able to talk to people and bring in business for our company." It's and for me when I went to school and and we didn't have a sales program at the time we had a business uh, program business marketing and a lot of the students that I was uh, my colleagues and, and classmates went into uh, the marketing world but eventually went into sales because they realized that it wasn't what was they were taught right away like they weren't working at the agencies they were put into sales roles before they could get to some of those higher marketing capabilities. They want you to have the foot to the ground. And this is one of those things that we looked at when we created this courseware. Um, as we were going into it with this knowledge and with this mindset, knowing that a large percentage of student business students were going to go into sales, we wanted to make sure that we give you gave them exactly what that is. And BJ is going to cover that in a second. But this is what we're going to promise you today. We're going to go over the courseware, the vision of it, the purpose behind it, what comes down from the heart, why we do this. We're going to show you our 
our table of contents and you're going to content you're going to get you're going to salivate over it you're going to be like oh my goodness can i get it right now and we may give you or may not we'll give you some samples of the chapter we're going to show you the sim a little bit of that teaser of it and then we're going to show you how to use the courseware as a professor this is where bj came in and he needed to guide me because i was an adjunct professor and he was like donald this is the ropes you can't be so lenient with the kids <laughs> but we're going to give you the give you the tools <laughs> what you need to do and then we're going to show you how this is involved in the industry Fortunately, as BJ shared, I got a chance to really rub elbows with a lot of folks that were out there in the business world. And a lot of these people knew what we were doing. And I shared, as I shared the vision with them, and they were, they backed us and they gave, uh, you'll see videos that we're going to share regarding these in the courseware um, of, of experts that are giving advice as well. So this is going to be jam packed for you students. So much fun. Yeah. So we want to share with you a little bit of kind of what practitioners are saying about our courseware in general. This is, this is you know full transparency these are quotes from our from our first textbook um but we want you to just kind of hear what not just what students professors are saying but what are practitioners saying right so this is a an account manager at aws he said students learn skills they will use in their first week on the job such as phone prospecting and handling customer rejections i especially like the emerging techniques such as using social media cell and the chapter on crm analytics and so here like I think it just we wanted to share this because it highlights really what me and Donald's vision is about, which is that, hey, we want students to be able to hit the ground running when they get their first job. We want them to, to, to learn things they're going to do their very first week. Uh, and, and really, our goal was really to shrink the onboarding process by about three months. Right. That's kind of that, that that's kind of the underlying goal me and Donald have always had when we've been writing our courseware. Yeah, and this one is uh, another one that from one of uh, the sales executives, Scipio, said Donald and BJ hit the nail on the head in courseware as the dress is the latest and greatest ways to sell. As a sales leader, I wish my new sellers went through something like this in college. They would be light years ahead. And that's the thing that makes such a big difference is because we want to make sure your students, as they go out into the world to make impact, that they're, they have the tools, they have the capabilities, and you're going to see how we do this. BJ, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's dive in. It's <laughs> <Some> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don, why don't you tell them a little bit about kind of our vision of sure. the courseware, and then we'll yeah. get into the nitty gritty, what kind of what I think most people are here for is what's actually in the book. All right, if you guys are ready for the nitty gritty, go ahead in the comment and say, yes, give it to us, give it to us. All right, so here's the, you're going to get in this book, this text, in this uh, course where you, you get the, not only the textbook, but you get real life training programs. We do not, and do not, do not just want students to sit down and just feel like they're being uh, bombarded with just like, uh, you know, just a whole overload of text to get actual practice. And this is created like a training program. When I go into this morning, I've been on, I've been uh, doing a, a trained with a team that covers, uh, uh, um, Team members from Europe to the U.S. East Coast, and then I was also on another call with team with uh, with uh, doing one of our training programs with folks in Poland and folks here in stateside. Now I tell you this, and I'm not telling you to brag. I'm telling you because this stuff is the things that I just got off calls teaching these organizations. It's what we put into our book and into the courseware because we wanted to give that real life experience. So the students are going to get that. They're going to get the focus on the skills that prepared for them that they can use post graduation. They get lots of insights and from managers and from the the uh in from the sales managers and experts you're going to see the new emerging topics such as social selling that we utilize my last program that i just left when i jumped to jump in this one is our linkedin prospecting and everything that i learned from linkedin is what we use in this programs and what we use in a courseware so it's like you're not getting watered down stuff it is the real life things that are happening right now and then obviously we have some things that's going to reduce the prep time for facility for uh, for instructors and professors like you as an adjunct and as someone that's running an organization i have team meetings it's impossible for me to think that i was going to create all of the templates and everything needed to be able to lift have a course for it. but stukin did such a fantastic job make it easy for me to be able to have that all right okay let's do a second drum roll here donald let's go uh to the table of content here's what we got okay so here's our 12 chapters let me walk you through me and donald's vision as we lined up and outline these chapters okay so the first three chapters these are what we call our foundational chapters and this is going to teach students everything they need to know in order to do well in the in uh, the next chapters so we're going to talk about kind of the foundations of professional selling 
while we know this is an advanced courseware, we also know that there's going to be some professors who want to use this as their first uh, course taught at the university. For example, if you have really advanced uh, undergrads or an MBA course. So we still want to give students kind of some foundation of what professional sales is, the type of jobs you might get. Then we'll go through the sales process, right? What does it look like to be a salesperson at the beginning of, of the funnel towards the end? We'll talk about analytics uh, and research, right? And then we'll go into some really some of the, the types of content that people need, that students need to be able to know in their career to sell and to close. Uh, specifically, we're super excited about the emphasis of, of this textbook on landing large accounts, what in the industry we call enterprise, right? So we're going to talk a lot about multi-threading, about how to find multiple stakeholders and how to get them excited about the product that you're selling. We'll talk about negotiations. Uh, and then we can't get away from online selling because everything is going virtual. And this was some of the feedback we got from our first textbook was, hey, can you can you put in some stuff um, about virtual selling? How do you sell over Zoom and how is that different than in person? So we have a whole chapter on how to sell in a virtual environment and then how to generate leads, right? How do we do business development using both social media? We're going to teach students about tools such as LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And then we want students to learn, well, what can I do when I actually get into a management position? Because some of the people that you teach in your course will actually be managers, right? If, especially if it's an upper level elective or a master's level class, how do I teach and lead a sales team? And so we're going to, so that's a high level overview of our table of contents. So now what we want to do is show you really some of the nitty gritty that's in some of these chapters. Oh, yes. All right. So um, let's jump in and let's talk about some of this. Uh, everything that you see here, ladies and gentlemen, like the, the beautiful part about this is it's very applicable to what a seller is going to jump into, and especially if they're going to some kind of a leadership role within an organization. One of the first things that we'll see that your, your students are going to go through and what we tackle in a course where is this notion of enterprise level selling. Now, some of you may say, well, my students are going to go into an entry level job. They may not necessarily go into a large company sales process. But here's the thing that we see in industry. Email outreach has gone up by 50% since the pandemic, 50%. Replies rate, and we talked about this when we talked about behavior, consumer behavior, if you're on that webinar a couple weeks ago, reply rate has decreased by 30%. And this is information from Gartner and from LinkedIn when I was visiting with them recently. And I was blown away by that stat because we're seeing this. But here's what's happening. A lot of the small, mid-sized organization are behaving like enterprise level organization. It's hard to get a hold of them. You don't know, necessarily know who the key folks to get a hold of is as easily. So you have to use that multi-threading approach, utilizing omni-channel. You can't just go through phone or emails anymore. You need to utilize social. You need to utilize text message. You need to utilize direct mail. And we show you and we explain some of these strategies when it comes towards landing an enterprise level deal. On our team internally, when we do outreaches, we notice that all of these things put together help make the magic happen. So we're not just going to teach your students how to get pigeonhole in just one thing. They're going to learn the full gamut of how they can take advantage of all of these emerging areas to omni-channel or omni-channel meaning using multiple channels to be able to reach those prospects um, in, in the, that are hard to reach. We're going to teach multi-threading, and BJ kind of explained this. If you know multi-threading, think about a okay, rope. If you have one contact in an organization, and you know, hopefully you can close the deal with that person, but we see that that's very difficult. That person may leave or get promoted, and we see what the great resignation has happened over the past couple of years. People are switching jobs off. Often. But can what if we had that one person and that person leaves? Our deal fall apart. So we're going to teach you how to utilize the multi-threading, finding th different key stakeholders, influencers, people who may be a part of the decision-making process, or people who may be uh, maybe end users, and how you can use this to be able to wove in or create that strong rope that uh, that strengthens the opportunity or that deal progressing. We're going to show you how you can identify these individuals using social media and what you should be saying and how you should go about interacting and engaging with them to be able to extract information that's going to help you to be able to secure and increase that deal. Ooh, it's one of my favorite areas, BJ. I want to show you this uh, concept here is uh, 
this this tool and many of you if you're done some stuff with selling i want to 60 you've probably seen this this is what we call a, a mutual action plan and in many industries especially in enterprise level selling they use something like this but here's the fascinating things that we see as well is that even on non-enterprise level even small accounts small deals studies have proven that 65 percent of the population are visual 65% of the population is visual. This is why we have these beautiful slides here for you today, because most of you probably won't be able to try to think about this stuff and put it together, but by visually showing you, we are able to enhance and have you help you have a better experience. So when it comes towards selling, especially to large accounts or even to the small accounts, we teach sellers how to utilize mutual action plan where it gives the seller and the buyer a blueprint or a map or a guide what they can expect and how they can go about uh, uh, following this. We use something similar to this and we created a little template here that you can utilize, which uh, your students will be able to utilize and be able to take advantage of when it comes towards this. Who are the key people? How do they multi-thread? What matters most to those individuals? Who's gonna do what and how this pro the, the deal is gonna progress so that we can close that deal in a shorter time period. But this is one of those examples that your students are gonna like and you're gonna see. And by the way, as well, if you have questions as we go throughout this, go ahead and drop those questions in the chat and we'll take a peek at those as well. Yeah, I am so excited about this aspect of the, of the courseware. So while our book has one particular chapter about landing large accounts, you will find this, this, this concept integrated in almost all of the chapters. And this is what we mean by advanced selling, right? We're trying to teach students not just about the basics of prospecting and negotiating, but how do you do this in an enterprise level? And this is this is what when we have people come speak uh, at BYU uh, in our sales programs and do trainings, this is what they're trying to teach my students is, hey, you need to be able to, to interact with multiple stakeholders and really think strategically about the way that you approach sales. So along those lines of being strategic in the way we approach, one of the things we're really excited about is that this, this um, courseware goes in, in depth into a number of sales methodologies. So if you used our, force, our first courseware, you know that uh, it's fairly agnostic into specific methodologies. We talk mostly just about uh, how to ask questions, how to ask good questions, what are the purpose of questions, when do you ask them, how do you ask follow-up questions. Um, and we didn't want to use one particular methodology because we want students to know, hey, you use what's best for you in your industry. And so what we did with this courseware was we have a chapter where we teach students about five different types of sales methodologies. Um, so one of the most popular ones, right, that a lot of you teach in your courses is spin. So we have a, a section on spin selling. And then when, when students go to the simulation, they actually learn and practice how to use spin selling in uh, a sim type of uh, situation. Another one that we're really seeing is up and coming, Donald, that I know that a lot of the companies you work with are starting to, to really ask you to, to train on is, is the challenger sell. So yeah, the challenge, no, sorry, go, go ahead, Donald. It. Now I'm cutting you off and go to you jump in because I'll, I'll, I'm getting no, too so, excited. BJ. <laughs> so here we're really emphasizing to students about the consultative nature of sales, especially as the world becomes really heavy into services, into the SaaS. We want to teach students that, hey, as a seller, you have a lot of knowledge and part of your job as a seller is to is to challenge the assumptions of your customer is to help them see a better way of approaching things really well, again, what we call consultative selling. And so we, we have a section on this uh, and the part, the simulation round that deals with, with challenge sales is so good. Like students are going to, are going to learn by doing of how to challenge assumptions and how to be a consultant to the customer. Yeah, it is. It's one of the fun piece about this area is that it takes sales professional to a whole nother level bj like when you i when you when i looked at sales back in the days you saw it was like you know maybe someone that's a you, you think it's a the fuller brush man knocking on your door or a used car salesperson but when it comes towards this this idea of being a consultative seller it allows for us to take sellers from many different disciplines go back to what you said about financial students or accounting students now, the reason why this is absolutely critical, going into the climate that we're seeing right now, when I've talked to clients, 
one of the big components, the big fears that they have is that they're, they can't use order takers anymore. Order takers are just people that are just sit back and just waiting for deals to come through. They need people who are going to go out and create deals. And the prospects, as they're working with folks, the re, they're being bombarded with emails. Go back to what we said again. 50% of emails have gone up by 50%. Out the the, uh, the reply rate has decreased, and it's because people are getting bombarded. But if you can come in as a consultant ch using the challenger model, it helps you so often to stand out against the pack and also help you to be able to be seen and respected by your prospects. Now, this leads right into the ideas of sales management, one of the section in this course where this wasn't in our first one. And uh, th because it's advanced, we know what naturally happens. An individual performs well as a sales rep, and then they get hit with the opportunity for management and for up and for growth. And we figure if this is going to happen in industry, we want your students to be prepared for that, and especially for you all who are teaching those advanced coursework. In this, in the, in this uh, section, as we went through it, and we're going back uh, in scenarios, BJ and I were able to deliberate. Uh, excuse me. Uh, ideate a little bit about what are some of the challenges that we see in industry and some of the things that are top right now top of the list no matter what as a sales leader is recruiting 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 did i say recruiting is being able to recruit and land top talent and keep top talent with your organization we're going to teach them how they can ex execute interview skills as when they would what they would questions they would ask and the secret part to this too is that these tips and questions they can use as they go and are interviewed for their first uh, sales job. So <laughs> we're giving them some good stuff here. Coaching, we teach them how they can coach. We're gonna give some specific scenarios with the SIM where they get a chance to look at data and see how their sales reps are performing and then to be able to coach those sales reps in conjunction to the way that they are uh, in regards to the, their numbers. We're teaching them how to be those analysts as a leader and not only as an individual contributor. Leading the sales team, motivating, building culture so that people want to stay with your organization so they can have fun. Commissions, we're going to talk, talk a little bit more about commissions and you'll see that as well. Key leadership skills, being empathetic. Sometimes we see like the old school movies with the sales leaders who was really mean and yell and scream and is a jerk. But we're not going to do that. There's a better way to lead. And we're going to show them how they can lead more effectively with the right skills. Compensation, what kind of packages it looks like for a new sales rep coming in? And how do you help this individual to graduate and perform and to grow with the organization? And also to help them to stay with it because of the compensation packages. Sales tech stacks. Now we give them an opportunity to get a, their feet wet when they get into the industry. What kind of tools they might use as an individual as well as as a leader. Different CRMs that they may, be, uh, uh, they may, may need, need to be aware of. And also different tools that are out there that they can take advantage of, such as Gong or tools for lead generation, such as Apollo. And BJ would talk about that. And then obviously international selling. The world is, I, I shared with you this morning, like the teams that we're working with, when I sell in Europe, it is totally different than selling in the United States. You, we are all across borders um, selling these days. So it's important that we understand how to sell internationally. And we're going to give you some tools on that and give you some ideas in the course where how students can effectively do this. Now, this component here is one of the things that students, I know BJ, when the first year, you told me that your students were asking about this and my students as well. They're like, what's my career path? What do I do when I get in sales? In our first course where we talk about some of those different roles and jobs, but here we go a little bit deeper in showing about those paths and what those time and experiences and that OTE column gets them really excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> lots of students, lots of students um, who are like, "Well, I never thought about a job in sales, but now I do." Yeah, <laughs> at that point, and you'll see some of those different terms. OTEs ta on target earning if they have their base salary plus their commissions. So this is they're getting all of this when it comes towards that leadership standpoint. BJ, any thoughts on this as you're working with your students? Yeah, I think one of the things also I like I love about Stukin right is that it's a lifetime access. So. I have students come to me and say, hey, like, I know I learned about this concept in your class. I couldn't remember all the details. I went back. This is after they have their job, right? I went back to the courseware yeah. and I practiced that concept, right? And so <laughs> but that's what, and, and so when me and Donald, again, when we designed this courseware, you know, whether it was sales management or uh, landing large accounts, we, we made it with the standpoint that it was simple enough that students could comprehend the big vision in the moment, but also that it's kind of like a training manual 
that, that we expect students to come back to if it is really something they make a career out of. Um, so I want to talk about just two, two last uh, little pieces of the textbook, and then we're going to do another poll, and we'll talk about uh, the simulation. So um, if you use our first, our first courseware, you know we have a really robust section on social selling. And so what we want to do with this, with this courseware was kind of take that to the next level, as well as really concentrate on tools. And so here students are going to get a, an overview of some of the most popular tools that are used. So for example, LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And here at the bottom, you see kind of a, um, a mock-up of what LinkedIn Sales Navigator looks like. And so uh, in the textbook, they're going to learn about the particular tools like Sales Navigator. And then in the simulation, they're actually going to get something that looks just like this. And they're going to be asked to make decisions and map out who the stakeholders are so that then they can use those tools in their career. They're going to learn about Hunter.io. There's a video in the courseware about how to how to use hunter.io to get the the information for particular leads and um, we are going to learn about sales research and analytics um, so again the first courseware has a really robust section on analytics here we want to take it to the next level apologize here that the uh, the animation didn't work so that that first part that's blocking it was supposed to show up later but this essentially talks about different uh, different types of analytics that we teach in the courseware. So for example, we have a section on lead scoring algorithms, customer lifetime value. We talk a lot about customer intelligence software. And then we teach them not just about what, this, what those, those type of research or analytic tools are, but actually how to use them. Okay, so here we uh, is, is a, a little call out box from our courseware that teaches students, okay, how would I use customer lifetime value calculations when I'm making a decision? And how would I use that, that information in the negotiation phase? So we're really excited about some of the new stuff in the textbook, like Donald talked about, um, enterprise level selling. Um, we're also really excited in methodologies. We're also really excited about the stuff that adds on to the previous textbook, where we kind of take into the next level research, analytics, and the additional stuff like sales management. All right, ladies and gentlemen, pop quiz, pop quiz. Here we go. LinkedIn examined the first job function of all CEOs. All of their job functions, where did sales rank? Of all their job functions, where did sales rank? I have top of the list, middle of the list, bottom of the list. You're all wrong. It's bottom. Top of the list. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, you know, that, oh man, you gave you, why you deceive those folks, BJ? <laughs> you know, while you're all doing the, the quiz, I just want to thank all of you again for coming out. Uh, I think oh we're, we're, we're blown away by the number of people who showed up, even though only a small portion of you are doing the pulse or, or asking questions like, thank you so much for the great turnout and the response. We really appreciate it. So much fun. So the answer here, obviously, is the overwhelming. The number goes back to the top. Yes. Boom. Top two areas, business development and sales. This is where, and look, BJ, you pointed this out too when you looked at business development. Share your thoughts on that. Yeah, so when I go, when I go and talk to industry experts, when I do sales trainings, I mean, business development is sales like business development is prospecting it's getting people right and um and a lot of companies now are trying to really integrate sales and marketing they just call it you know revenue you have your chief revenue officers now in the c-suites and so when i saw this i mean it just made me that much more excited about helping my students see that hey biz dev sells like these are careers that not just make you a lot of money and work and give you a great life but they also prepare you for the c-suite yeah. And one of the beautiful thing about this too, is like, it is for me, I always thought that it was finance when I was in college. That's where a lot of folks were coming from their executive, but clearly it's been tides have changed. Um, and this tie, speaking about tide changing, we're going to change now and jump over into the actual simulation, give you a little bit of taste on that. So you got some, uh, you got some crumbles here. Let me show you some of the things that tie back to our SIM. One of the uh, areas with the, the, 
the reason why, and, and go back to me as a student, one of the things that I really, really loved was when I had hands-on experience. We, at a university at BYU-Idaho where I went to, they had uh, they have a business program. And this whole semester, you get real money and you go create a real company with a group of you, like 15, 20 of you, and you need to make profit from that that money. And it was just so cool that we got hands-on experience, got our hands dirty. And that's what I love about the sim. It's closest to us getting them jobs into sales by giving them the opportunity to interact and to practice. Now, one of the things that it comes to when with negotiation, BJ, I know you want to touch base on this a little bit, is explaining how this component is uh, effective with our courseware and specifically how we use negotiation. Yes, we're super excited about the courseware. Uh, we're also super excited about the sim, right? So me and Donald were really involved in the design of the simulation. Because I know as a professor, it's really frustrating when students are like, well, why did I get this wrong? That wasn't in the textbook, right? And so we want to make sure it, it maps really closely to the courseware and the textbook that, that your students are going to be using. Uh, but most importantly, that it aligns with the vision of student, right, which is really giving students a hands-on learning experience. So, so for example, we have a, a round where we look at negotiations, where students actually uh, negotiate with kind of an AI bot type uh, customer. They'll click enter the call just like they would on a real uh, sales call using something like Zoom, right? And then we have the AI bot show up and this, this, this mock-up customer here dynamically responds to the things that the student wants to say. So the students will get options based on um the previous thing that the customer said and then the customer will dynamically respond and what's really exciting about this as well is that it it builds on each other so the better questions the students ask right and the better responses they give to in this negotiating round they'll get better information from the customer that will then enable them to give a really hands-on feel of what does it what does it look like to negotiate on product on contract and on pricing that is so, so cool. <laughs> now go back to what BJ set up at the very beginning. Remote selling is still one of the top things. With with uh, the clients that I work with, a lot of them, I've never ever seen them in person. And I know some students, when we talk about sales, they think about it like the old school days where we're going to get on the golf course and we're going to go and, and meet people. Like For the most part, you're not going to see a lot of these folks. And remote selling is a critical concept towards this. We're going to teach all of that. We're going to teach you how to prospect and how to utilize video in that outreach process, whether that's those emails or utilizing video on social, such as LinkedIn and whatnot. Discovery calls, just like you're seeing here with the sim, you get a chance to interact like BJ share with AI so you can get a real life experience, asking effective questions, overcoming objections, and closing. How do I close effectively over a video component? And what about management? How do I lead my team on a remote sales team? These are going to be highlighted and taught and experienced through the sim so that the students can know from a real life experience as much as possible what they can, uh, how they can take away rather than just theory inside of uh, inside just reading. But that's one of the powerful things that I love about it. When I, my students in our class were going through, um, when we go through and we go through the sim, it's one of the fun parts for them. And they figure out new things and they come to class and they share insights that they learn from just practicing. Things that they didn't have, they missed or may not have seen in class, but because they were able to do it, it made such a big difference. Provides such a better learning experience. Yes, and also please excuse the cheesy picture of myself here in the. <laughs> oh <laughs> come on, that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So um, one one other piece we want to touch on uh, in the simulation is sales management because one of the concerns me and Donald has is, as we were writing the sales management sections of the the textbook was a lot of these students will never have worked in management before how are they going to kind of contextualize what we have in there and so this part of the simulation was really important to us and so in in the simulation they're actually going to get a chance to manage a team they're going to get a chance to recruit and hire uh different sellers for their team they're going to learn what are the attributes that i'm looking for and then they're going to have opportunities to actually coach so they're going to get a, a similar like information here, like you see this dashboard on a particular seller, right? And they're going to see, hey, what does this seller, what does this seller need? 
What are they not doing right? And then they're going to chance to actually coach that seller to help them improve. And one thing I want to, one more thing I want to add on this is that we know a lot of you who teach your advanced uh, selling uh, course don't have a sales management section. So what we've done with this, with this SIM is you can actually toggle the sales management sections off. Uh, so if you're like, I don't have a sales management section, I don't know if I want that. You can toggle that off. Your students will never know it was actually in the courseware. If you teach only a sales management section and you want to use this part, you can toggle all the other parts off and just use the sales <laughs> management courseware. Um, but we're really excited about this. And we think that as professors, you're going to love this part of the simulation. All right. Um so why this courseware is easy to teach from a adjunct professor i'm just coming in and just sharing my heart from this standpoint and you all who are professors with so much going on so many different roles that you're things you have to take care of this just makes it easy it's like that old school tv show where you set you know that, that infomercial bj set it and you forget it <laughs> <laughs> or shamway no the sim offers auto grading feedback for students like I don't have to go back in and grade all my 30 students, like how they performed on the SIM automatically does that. The course scheduling and syllabus, that one is like amazing. I love it, love it, love it. Links to the articles and gives you expert advice and, and gives you those tips and guidance. And I know one of the things that's not listed here is that I'm a big fan of is that now it gets to integrate with my canvas baby so i use canvas uh at the University of byu um idaho and now that integration is there so my ta is super happy and excited <laughs> about that capability that we can get that information pushed over into it it's so so easy um test banks have an ability to have that the lecture slides come on a beautiful uh, student does a great job with that I, I gotta agree with that bj you know look at some of the slides that i create i'm like man this looks like a mishmash but students look at those student slides they're like man you look you did a great job um mr kelly and i'm like yeah <laughs> you know thank you student does an amazing job with those beautiful slides auto grading of the quizzes again another big thing so my students can see right after they finish with their quiz how they did with uh, the chapter and then lesson plans for role plays and activities we went all in with that so some of these things you can take and you can utilize with your you know with all of your classes the lesson plans and the activities are just so 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 powerful and uh, easy for you to use so from an adjunct absolutely love it i can't imagine what how much more easy it would be for you all as well yes and uh and we know some of you are really seasoned in teaching sales we know some of you are new and you may be asking yourself like how do i how do I integrate kind of a hands-on experience in the classroom? Well, all of our lesson plans have all the role plays in there for you. They'll tell you exactly what to tell students. Your students are going to walk away thinking you're a pro, that you know everything about sales, right? And you're going to be uh, thanking uh, the heavens that you found the student courseware. And uh, I'm going to let you hear on a little secret um, that one thing that's so great about this courseware and combining it with the sim right like in the classroom that i teach is that the students feel like hey i got a hands-on experience like i really learned some applicable stuff and i grade almost nothing right? <laughs> that's what i love about the student platform and about the course we designed is it gives really my students what they want but it doesn't put right a lot of the onus on me as a professor to provide the grading, right? So the, all the quizzes are dynamically graded on the platform. The simulation, those type of things I used to do in my class where they'd come in and we do a case, right? And we do a role play and I'd have to grade it and it was just me grading it. That's all now done on the platform. It's dynamically graded or peer reviewed. And so the students get everything they want. And me as a professor, right? I grade very little. Um, so let's highlight, Don, before we move on, because we're almost done here, let's highlight sure. a couple of these questions. Um, so uh, Carissa or Carissa um, asked if the, when the sim will be ready. Um, Darlin answered, but let me just highlight that, that. So the textbook is ready right now for you to go look at and get a first peek at. Um, we're thinking that this will probably be for the spring adoption, like in January, and the sim will be ready by then. 
So you'll be able to use both uh, at the same time when you adopt. Um, and then uh, Anne asked if they need to have used the first SIM, if this builds on the first SIM, and the answer is no. Um, and that was a big, that was a really big thing for me and Donald was while we want the content to kind of be advanced, we want it to be self-contained. So you could still teach this courseware and this SIM um, to students who don't have a lot of sales knowledge. Um, we, we assume they have some general uh, business knowledge, but it's all self-contained in there. You don't have to have used the first courseware or the first SIM to use uh, the second SIM, uh, or excuse me, for the advanced selling to use this SIM or this courseware. Uh, Can I answer yes. Tom's? So Tom, uh, go back to you, speaking to you here from the eyes to eyes as a uh, as a practitioner and as a, a leader. So if it's the question that Tom has is, if this is a lock and load publisher courseware, what's the adjunct's contribution? So again, the, we give you the tools to be able to utilize, but there's no way that this can be done without that expert knowledge, whether you're the professor or you're the adjunct. This is where you come in and you, you take the content and you build on that. So let's say, for instance, we teach about how to write effective email. They, you can give your real world experience as an adjunct to say, this is how we utilize email in my, in our industry. And you can mold it accordingly. And obviously we give you the assignments. You could tweak those assignments or use yours. I use some of my, uh, some other, sometimes I, I, I tweak the assignments that we have in there. And even though we created them, but we allow for us to be able to get some, some other experiences. Maybe I experienced something this past month that I want to put in as an assignment and I can do that. So you have total opportunities to be able to do so. But the beautiful component is that you don't have to do all of the building. Mm. And I think that's the big thing. You don't have to build the foundation, take the Lego pieces as Stukin would say, and you can construct the beautiful castle and rocket ship of however you'd like it. But we give you all of those pieces so you can Yeah, utilize. I love that point, Donald. And I and that's that's really like the role to me, like the role of the professor right, is to deliver and teach the material and then in in class do role plays and give hands on feedback right then. Right. And if I can free myself from meaning to do a bunch of the grading on the back end, I can really concentrate on the front end of really designing a class that doesn't just regurgitate the material, but really allows me to teach the students what it looks like in practice. And so, right, for people like you, Tom, and for Donald, who are adjuncts, who are practitioners, like, man, to me, this courseware is designed for you because it's going to give you the structure, right, that you're going to get if you're a lifetime instructor or teacher, but it's going to allow you to really teach the students uh, that hands-on, feedback-oriented classroom environment. Love it. Awesome. I want to respect their time, BJ, as we're getting ready to jump through here. Yeah, sorry. So uh, one of the other things we're super excited about is our expert videos. Um, and so we have a ton of videos in the courseware. Again, we don't want people to just uh, read the text and be like, yeah, is this really true? Right? Did, did, did Donald, you just make this <laughs> up? Or, or we want more than just us and you saying, hey, this is how we do it. So we have we have experts, some really big names in the field who do videos in the courseware talking about, hey, here's the principle and here's how I implement this principle in real life. Um, the feedback I've got from from professors, they also really like that they're not very long, right? Most of them are under five minutes. Most of them are under probably under three minutes. It's very short. So a lot of students watch them because they're short. And the students in my class will say, hey, I really like this video of this person talking about how they implement it. It's so again, just uh, to go with our hands-on approach. Awesome. Now I'm fortunate uh, for uh, the opportunity here to be able to have um, to have these uh, the videos and some of them are my friends and folks that I get a chance to interact with and, and I'm fortunate for that. And I, I know that they, they come with well-meaning to deliver value to help your students. So use them as much as possible, take advantage of these things. And let's help you to be able to help your students. Like we don't want to, this is not going to take you away from the classroom. There's nothing that's going to, you know, replace you as a, as a professor with that knowledge and with that expertise that you bring. We just want to make your life easier 
to add on and to give you some of those capabilities. Now, if you again, as much as the work that you want to do, feel free to do so. Um, this is not a you don't have to take all of it, but just think of it like going to the Thanksgiving dinner in a couple in about a week or so here in the States. You don't have to eat everything that mom cooks. You know, maybe you just go ahead and get the turkey and get some of the stuffing, but whatever you'd like. And but we know that this is going to help you tremendously to have a great meal so that you don't have to go hunt a turkey on your own. <laughs> so pumped to, to have you here. So pumped to be able to work with you. And if there are any other questions, we want to make sure we can answer those. But in the meantime, please connect with BJ and I on LinkedIn. We would love to be your friends. Um, and uh, go yes. ahead and look at some questions. Thank you. Thank you both so much, uh, Donald and, and BJ. Um, yeah, if you have questions, uh, please put those in the chat. Uh, while we're waiting for some of those questions to come in, I do want to let you know about some exclusive offers that we have for you that, uh, that we're excited to announce just for those uh, here in attendance. So first, you have a couple chances to win. Um, for the first five people who jump on a demo for this advanced selling and sales management courseware, you'll receive a $25 Amazon gift card. And so you can uh, schedule the demo in the in the link there. And so the first five that, that get that demo, uh, we'll send you that gift card. Um, and then uh, another offer, uh, thanks sp specifically to, to Donald and BJ, for the first five people who order today, who fill out the order form or who talk with a, a representative at order uh, today or in the coming days, uh, Donald and BJ have offered to be a guest speaker in your course. Uh, so that's a pretty awesome offer that uh, that you won't find uh, anywhere else. And if you are interested in that, um, you can go ahead and uh, and put your uh, your email in the chat or, or email or message Darlin in the, the chat with your email and she'll uh, she'll get you set up to help you get that uh, for your course. So uh, you can be ready to go and have them in your classroom um, because as you've seen, uh, they're they're great and they would love to uh, to participate. And yes, I know some of you may think, do we have to drive or fly them in? No, we'll just jump on Zoom if that's that's uh, that's easy. If you're in Florida, you know, I'll come out to you. If you're close yeah, by, it, BJ, I'm sure you Unless you're in Southern California or Florida or the Bahamas, then you have to fly us down. <laughs> <laughs> but we would love to jump in and and uh, one of us to be able to come in and speak to your class. It would be uh, it would honor. It's, it's fun. Um, so. Take advantage of that. Stu, is that a, I didn't know that. No one had told me that before. Did you see that, Donald? The second best selling for sales in year one after launch. Man, oh, yeah. you know, come on, man. Woo! Come on. Second People love it. They the love that. <laughs> that's, 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 that's awesome. See, this, the, the numbers don't lie there, ladies and gentlemen. Students love it. <laughs> It looks like we did have another question come in there from uh, from Daryl at the end before we uh, before we close out. I've heard a few lectures about the challenges sales process and it comes across as too aggressive versus consultative selling process. While more, uh, uh, which is more professional? So, uh, great question, Daryl. It's let me clarify that a little bit. Um, I just interviewed the author of the challenge, the creator of the challenge of sale. His name is uh, some one of uh, some Matt. Um, we're on first name basis now, Ooh. but Matt didn't. Um, <laughs> he was on your podcast. Doesn't mean he's your friend. No. You know, we're we're friends now. Um, but one of the things though, that people get wrong with the challenges is you're 100 percent right there. They take kind of take it as this license to insult, like, no, you're stupid. So my time, my process is right and wrong. Now, what they wanted with the challenger was to help people understand that you need to not is to challenge assumption. And it's not pushy or aggressive when you do that appropriately. Let's say, for instance, when I go to my doctor and I tell my doctor, hey, I need to have surgery. If my doctor says, yes, that sounds great. You should have surgery. I would run to the hills because that's not being, a, that's, he needs to challenge, why do I have that? McDonald, tell me a little bit more about that. Why do you feel that you need to have surgery right now? Oh, because I have a stomach ache. Okay, now it's, the challenge of sale is is consultative, but you're, the difference is you're challenging assumption. It's not to be pushy or to tell people that they're wrong. If somebody is totally right on the point, then you, you guide them through that process. You're a consultant. But it's a matter of you have more intel typically as a sales professional, and it's your job, your duty to consult that buyer through that process. But by all means, this is where people get the mistake on that. Um, where And, and, and I, I find it very... Um, 
frustrating as well as somebody who's in industry when sales reps think that they need to be mean um and that's no way not yeah well, and also so. i just want to add quick. there that uh um some of your students are going to love the challenger sell some of your students are not going to like it and think hey this doesn't work for the industry i'm going in and to me as a professor that's fine right that's why this chapter introduces like five different types of methodologies because th they may not feel like challenger and, and we we never wanted to get to a point in the course where we were teaching like hey this is the methodology to use it's spin spin is where it's at or challenger is where it's at so what we do is we give students an opportunity to use both of them in the simulation and then the students can decide hey which one's best for me uh, great question daryl feel free to connect on linkedin let's see if any of you became friends with me i can tell mom in like next week i have new friends mom that's right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, connect with uh, with these two, and um, and then if you have any other follow up questions for them or or for us, uh, reach out, and we'd be happy to help you out. But thank you uh, so much, everyone, for joining today, and thank you, uh, Donald and BJ, for your time and for taking us through this. Yes, thank you so much, you everyone. All. We appreciate we appreciate Stukin support, and we appreciate so much everyone who have have helped Ooh. us uh, uh, apparently make uh, this the the second best selling uh, courseware in the first year. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yeah.